Next speaker is uh, Gubakania uh, Shanatharova. I hope I said it well. Um, it's from ICN2 and it's going to present ferromagnetic nanoreactors for control rose generation in Western weight treatment. The floor is yours. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, hello, everybody. Uh, Today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, ferromagnetic nanoreactors for controlled dross generation in wastewater treatment and also could be used in biomedical applications. And here is the outline of the presentation. And now, uh, first of all, what's the nanoreactor? Nanoreactor nano uh, contains the mesoporous dielectric support and then the biometallic semi-shell. The mesoporous dielectric support increases the surface of the uh, nanoreactor and also increases the efficiency. But the uh, biometallic semi-shell increases the potential difference between uh, metals and favors galvanic reactions. And also uh, the nanobatteries, they have uh, magnetic properties and they easily respond to the externally applied magnetic field. And we can magnetically steer them and recollect and recycle easily. And also uh, because of the biometallic semi-shell, the nanobatteries, nano reactors have phototherbal properties via plasmonic processes. So uh, what is the, um, no. How the nano battery works? Uh, no. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, the nanobattery contains the mesoporous dielectric support, which is the mesoporous silica particles. And then we deposit the iron layer on the mesoporous silica particles, which acts as a metal anode. And then we add the uh, gold, we do the gold deposition, which acts as a metal cathode. So this is the nanobattery. We can trigger the um, experiments with the light or we can magnetically guide them. So how the nanobattery works? There is a potential difference work functions. Uh, iron and gold, they have different work functions and there is a potential difference between iron and gold. So this work function triggers the oxidation of iron to iron two plus. So zero valent iron oxidized and releases two elect electrons. And one of these electrons can either uh, travel to the gold layer and uh, reduce the oxygen or the both electrons can travel to the gold layer and uh, in situ generate hydrogen peroxide. And this hydrogen, with the uh, help of the iron uh, cations on the system, hydrogen peroxide can form, uh, can reduce to the reactive oxygen species. Apart from uh, iron gold nanoreactors, we also have iron nanoreactors, which has the, uh, on the dielectric support, we have only iron layer. And the working principle of these nanoreactors are um, based on the Fenton reaction. So what happens, the main working principle is the, uh, in the system with various redox reactions takes place with the uh, help of oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. So zero valent iron reacts with oxygen and then it uh, catalyzes and catalyze uh, hydrogen peroxide in order to form reactive oxygen species. So to fabricate the nano reactors, first we need to do the uh, first process is to synthesize the silica particles. The synthesis is really easy process with dissolved surfactant in the water and they form micelles and at high temperature, they self assemble together and by adding a silica precursor, the hydrolysis and condensation take place around the micelles and we form mesostructured silica particles. At high temperature, we do the castination and we clean the silica particles from the contaminants. And here you see the image of the uh, silica particles we use um, when we, we use uh, we synthesize in our lab with the particle size 
200, 250 nanometers and pore size 510 nanometers. The next step of the synthesis of uh, the nanoreactor is to um, transfer the silica particles to the ethanol uh, because silica particles uh, really form cl clusters in water. And then we do, we infuse them on the water surface, the substrate inside. And then when we got the densely packed silica particles on the water surface, we remove the water and we clean the substrate with silica particles with oxygen plasma. After cleaning, we use RIE to reactive ion etching to individualize the particles, and we do the metal evaporation, iron and gold layers. These nano reactors can be used either uh, released in water or we can use them immobilized on the wafer. So here you see the UVV uh, results, the plus during uh, methylene blue uh, removal. We uh, conducted the experiments with the methylene blue dye, which is a contaminant and highly used in the pharmaceutical and dye industry. And uh, you can see both of the pillows, iron silica and uh, iron gold silica nanoreactors. As can be seen from the um, UVV pillows, you can see that the uh, absorption peak that corresponds to the methylene blue decreases rapidly. But when we uh, check the degradation rate, we can see that iron gold particles, uh, nanoreactors, they show better degradation rate than iron uh, silica. And also I would like to especially mention that we just used 20 microgram per milliliter in order to uh, degrade methylene blue, which is really low compared to other um, catalysts. And also the degradation rate with iron gold uh, nanoparticles is higher than only iron. This could be uh, explained because of the Iron gold particles, iron layer is more prote uh, protected with the gold layer and the passivation is uh, really uh, low. And also the lifespan of the nanoreactors are quite long. But with iron silica um, particles, we can say that iron silica nanoreactors, uh, iron is not really protected with the metal layer. It's more prone to the oxidation. And here you see the uh, magnetization loop of iron uh, nanoreactors. They have strong ferromagnetic behavior and low coercivity and saturation at low magnetic field. And uh, since we conducted some experiments, but I would like to mention we still to work on um, these nanoreactors because we need to understand the mechanism of the nanoreactors to maximize the chemical oxidation process. And also we have some competitive reactions in order like generation of water or sometimes it can generate uh, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. They could be reversible redox reactions at low pH like pH 4, 3. And also we need to study the effect of pH and effect of temperature through plasmonic induced photothermal processes. And also, apart from iron gold and iron nanoreactors, we have the new, uh, new nanoreactors. They are based on the photocatalytic applications, uh, which we use iron gold nanoreactors, and then we grow molybdenum disulfide on the top of iron gold nanoreactors. And why we use molybdenum disulfide? Because it has uh, some uh, advantages. It has low band gap, tunability of uh, the optoelectronic properties with the changing with the layers of the molybdenum disulfide. And it also has a very good um, physical and chemical characteristics for, and it, it really favors the creating heterojunctions with molybdenum disulfide. And it also uh, has the high capability to, check, to change the edges and to increase the catalytic efficiency. So here we have uh, iron and then molybdenum disulfide. So iron here mostly will play as a magnetic steering role or after the application to collect the uh, nanoreactors and photothermal effect. But uh, molybdenum disulfide, mostly it will be the major um, role will be the rust production. So here is the samples we prepared in our lab uh, with the silica that coated with molybdenum disulfide nanoreactors. We have argon. Uh, there is a carrier gas. We place uh, sulfur and then molybdenum oxide in the furnace. And at high, high temperature, we can grow molybdenum disulfide on the silica particles. So uh, in summary, we have uh, three different system, iron gold nanoparticles, iron, uh, iron gold nanoreactors, iron gold iron nanoreactors and iron molybdenum disulfide nanoreactors. 
And uh, with the iron and gold, uh, they have high surface area and it increases their efficiency. And we can e easily increase the degradation rate of dye with the uh, magnetic steering, or we can also use it for biomedical applications for the phototermal effects. And also these uh, nanoreactors, they have really good stability and the lifespan is long and the oxidation, uh, the passivation takes place really slow. And also uh, we showed really good degradation performance, almost 83% without adding any reactants or ad any additives. Uh, but we still need to uh, do some research on it. And with the iron and molybdenum disulfide nanoreactors, we are able to activate uh, to generate reactive oxygen species with the visible light. So thank you for your attention. That's it. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. The paper is open for questions. Thank you very much Kuba, for the Thank presentation. You. I just have just two curiosities about your process. Uh, one, when you prepare the, the, the silica nanoparticles or the mesopolis silica, you use the, the, the hydrolysis condensation and you use, I imagine, a, a surfactant, a CTAB, and then you eliminate it by the calcination. Do you have, let's say, issues or, or problems uh, to further disperse these particles, because sometimes the high temperatures can damage the dispersibility? Uh, well, with the silica particles, it's really hard to synthesize them, but uh, I didn't use calcination. I used the ammonium nitrate to clean the particles. And also uh, after this, I always dissolve them in ethanol and we didn't have any problems with the uh, aggregation. And also one, I would like to mention that maybe they can aggregate in solution a bit, it's true, because um, you need to modify silica particles in order to prevent the aggregation. But because we use the silica particles on the wafer, uh, on the substrate that are dry and they don't aggregate, aggregate when they are dry, especially after uh, etch the, etching the reactive oxygen species. So they are like individual particles. Thank you. And, and, and the other question is, you, you achieve a nanoparticle to around 200 nanometers in size. Do you test another size, for instance, 50 nanometers against 500 nanometers of mesoporous nanoparticles? We can... Uh, to increase the, the efficiency of the... Of the, of the uh, nanoreactor uh, how much sorry the size you did, said did you test another size of particle we worked did, yes we worked with 300 400 and 500 nanome uh, nanometers but uh, 200 nanometers form uh, show best um, best properties because other particles are can easily uh, precipitate because they're also iron and gold layer and it makes them uh, really heavy during the experiments that we need. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker again, please. Okay.